Update 0.28 arrived last week in Nuclear Option bringing a raft of new missions, features and equipment to our current favourite accessible multiplayer combat flight simulator. So extensive are the changes in fact that 0.28 is far and away the biggest and most important update to the early access sim yet. One of the problems that Nuclear Options suffered with was a lack of consequences beyond the obvious ones of simply losing an engagement or a war. Aircraft in the game were, broadly speaking, completely disposable valueless commodities that could be easily, endlessly thrown at a conflict until a suitable resolution was achieved. Nuclear Option is, let's not forget, an early access title and is still very much in active development and I'd always been hopeful that this particular foible of the game would be addressed somehow at some point. I'm very pleased to report that with the arrival of 0.28 that issue has indeed been addressed with the deployment of the new economy system. Aircraft and ordnance now come with a credit value and must, essentially, be purchased before being used. Players start with a moderately healthy bank balance that they can use to buy and equip their warbirds with and a small wage is dripped into the bank balance automatically as the game progresses. The bank balance is further topped up as the player destroys other units and objectives. If however you are continually unsuccessful and instead carelessly throw equipment at the enemy with little or no regard for that success your bank balance will quickly deplete and a player can rapidly find themselves without the funds to spend on the bigger flashier aircraft and weapons. It never means you can't participate. The trusty cricket starter plane, a few well aimed AGM 48s will almost always be available but its addition adds another level of care that must be taken when choosing and persecuting a target and makes getting back to base and landing, rearming and refuelling etc much more valuable and important. The system is prevalent throughout the game but particularly important and noticeable in the sims headline escalation all out war mode. A new update to nuclear option these days almost always means a new aircraft in the sim and 0.28 is no exception. Enter then the KR67 Ifrit multi role fighter. The Ifrit can only just about reach 0.99 the speed of sound but it's equally comfortable hitting surface and air targets with ease making up for its lack of speed with superior versatility and agility coupled with excellent sensors and a reduced radar cross section. It has one more trick up its sleeve however. The Ifrit is Nuclear Options first aircraft to feature a tail hook meaning it is very at home on the next of Nuclear Options 0.28 headline features, the Hyperion class fleet aircraft carrier. The new fleet carrier isn't restricted to the Ifrit however it can also accommodate the Cricket, Compass and Medusa as well as the Chicane attack helicopter. It features two infrared and one radar guided surface to air missile launchers and a pair of 30mm point defence turrets but whilst it's clearly capable of defending itself up to a point operationally so far I've always encountered it flanked by escorting shard corvette missile cruisers and it's these as well as the carriers own air to air assets that make its presence in the battle space a formidable hurdle. The games titular Nuclear Ordnance hasn't gone untouched in this new update. Prior to 0.28 the largest nuclear warhead that could be deployed was 20 kilotons. More than enough to ruin anyone's afternoon you would think. Brace yourself. The new largest strategic level warhead that can be deployed is the city smashing 250 kiloton and when I say city smashing I'm not overstating it. If deployed into one of Nuclear Options now familiar urban population areas then, after the initial flash and expanding fireball, you'll see skyscrapers falling and buildings disintegrating as the gigantic shockwave races out from the centre. Over and above the headline features there's, as you'd expect, a raft of fixes, tweaks and balance improvements. Of particular note is now much easier to make early game headway in escalation mode but the fixes and balances certainly aren't restricted to that scenario. There's also new HUD elements to help with landing, messages from air traffic control, two new missions showcasing the new headline features as well as new tracer and mushroom cloud visuals. 
Overall then, Nuclear Option continues to be a hugely entertaining and very accessible combat flight sim that feels somewhat like a bit of a hidden gem on Steam right now. The price point of £15 represents excellent value for money and if you're in the market for an accessible combat flight simulator with plenty of challenge and depth that still doesn't take itself too seriously and you haven't already picked it up then you really are missing something and I personally can't wait to see what gets added next. How have you gotten on with the new Ifrit multi roll aircraft? Have you attempted a carrier landing yet and have you dropped a 250 kiloton nuclear warhead on a city? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join us on Patreon. Links to that and everything we've talked about in this video you'll find linked below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.